I'm Helen Evans. I'm the Mary and Michael Jaharis Curator for Byzantine Art in the Department of Medieval Art in the Cloisters at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And as I hope all of you who are here know, we have just opened the exhibition Byzantium and Islam, um, Age of Transition, that focuses on the seventh to ninth centuries as the southern provinces of the empire rule from Constantinople become part of the important uh, core of the emerging Islamic world and what ideas go forward and what changes in the process. So today we have some very distinguished speakers in a program that is sponsored and made impossible by Frosho Bays and gifts given in her honor and by Mr. and Mrs. John Bilimatsus. And we are doing this event in conjunction with Yeshiva University and we're delighted to be partnering with them um, today. Professor Stephen Fine, uh, who spoke uh, Sunday and the Sunday at the Met is somewhere in the audience, but I can't quite see him. The first of our speakers is on the destruction of images in 8th century Palestine, which is a topic that Robert Schick, a research fellow at the American Center of Oriental Research in Amman, Jordan, is particularly able to speak on brilliantly because he has been involved in the excavation and study of this material for decades and took me on a wonderful tour of the sites when I first went to Jordan asking for these loans for this exhibition. So I cannot imagine anyone who will know more or be more useful to you in trying to understand these issues. He has spent many years in Jerusalem. He has taught at universities um, all over the world and is just a very, very exciting scholar. So I hope you'll help me welcome Professor Schiff. Yes, well, thank you for the introduction. Well, for my uh, presentation this afternoon, I want to present the puzzling questions involved with attempting to understand what's going on with uh, so many churches in the modern area, modern day Israel, Palestine, Jordan, where at some point, more or less in the 8th century, people choose to deliberately destroy the images of people, animals in uh, the mosaic floors uh, that, that are in, in just dozens and dozens and dozens of churches around in, in the area. Now, I wish I understood what's going on, but I don't really, because there are so many oddities of, of this, what's, what's involved with this um, episode of deliberate destruction of the image, of which you see one spectacular uh, example in this first uh, photograph, where there had at one point been a person uh, shown, but has been uh, artistically altered and turned into a, a lovely plant. So. This is a, a case of disguising a, an original image in a way that is being done uh, artistically. Well, there are then dozens of examples of especially churches with mosaic floors filled with images that have uh, this deliberate scrambling of cubes of the mosaic floor. Someone comes around, lifts the cubes out, scrambles them up and puts them back in place in a way that's done carefully enough that you can sort of see what the original image was, but the, the in some way offensive image has been uh, scrambled up enough that it's no longer uh, bothering uh, anybody. And so then here you can see there are you know, four people lined up there and you can still sort of uh, detect the outlines of uh, the figures there. Well, so there's basic questions that I wish I would be able to answer, but I'll try to present what the problems are. Just what is this uh, damage destruction that's uh, going on, and 
what's the area in which this damage occurs and who did it, when did it happen and why, they're all open questions that uh, have multiple you know, answers conceivable, but I can't really definitively say I can answer any of these questions or explain uh, just, just what, what's involved here. Well, well, so then in general, most cases, you have uh, scrambling up of the mosaic cubes of uh, the complete uh, figures uh, here at, at uh, one ch of the churches at the site of Umar Rasas in uh, Jordan, where you have the head and most of the upper body of the image that's in the, the floor. You have the cubes taken out, scrambled up, and put uh, uh, back uh, in, in place. This is a typical uh, example of what goes on in most of the cases of, of these dozens of mosaic floors uh, in uh, the area. And it's not just people, you have animals as well. In this case, this at one point had been a bird. You can't really tell, but well, from other examples, you know it was, it was a bird there. The tail is there and the, the head's uh, there anyway. Again, the cube scrambled up. In this case, with some artistic sensitivity with this little uh, vase or bowl uh, put in as, as, a, as an attractive uh, design where the uh, bird had uh, once uh, been. So it's not just human beings, it's all sorts of animals, birds, fish, lions, uh, bears, sheep, goats, uh, whatever. So it's every sort of living being in these mosaic floors get deliberately damaged or destroyed or the cubes uh, scrambled up. And in this case, another case, you have a, a church uh, at a site in Amman dated by its dedicatory inscription to 687 uh, AD where, where the people have removed the cubes of the head of the peacock and the legs, leaving the rest of the body more or less intact. And in this case, not putting the cubes back but simply leaving uh, the damaged image this way. Uh, removing the head and the feet was enough in this case to uh, resolve the problem of this uh, offensive uh, image without the people here seeing the need to scramble up or destroy the entire body uh, of uh, the animal. Well, then another uh, example in the city of Madaba in Jordan where you see the entire mosaic floor originally was filled with uh, images of people and uh, animals, you know, row after row, uh, all the way through the entire church, where the cubes have been removed carefully so you can normally tell what the original image had been. Uh, you know, various uh, animals. You can still see the outlines. Here there was a person riding an elephant uh, in that one. In this case, the cubes were not put back, but simply left uh, with uh, the, the bedding of the mosaic floor uh, exposed. And in this case, then they weren't putting the cubes back as they were in the earlier examples uh, that uh, we had seen. But then again, all of the images here, people, animals, uh, get uh, destroyed. And this is an, a sort of a puzzling question. Well, well, this is not exactly the same thing as what's going on with iconoclasm in the Byzantine Empire, more or less at the same time in the eighth uh, century, where in the Byzantine Empire, there's a period of time when Christians decide that the veneration of icons is not appropriate, so they destroy icons. Icons being images of Christ, the Virgin Mary, the saints that are worthy of veneration in the churches. And so that's the problem in the Byzantine Empire with iconoclasm. These are not icons. They're depictions of ordinary people ordinary animals, they're not subject to veneration. And so this phase of deliberate destruction in these churches in 
the area of you know, Israel, Palestine, Jordan is not really iconoclasm. That's not an appropriate word to use here. It's the destruction of, of images in uh, general. And now then other cases where you have an image removed, and in this case, you can't tell what the original image was. They've taken the cubes of the image away and just patched it with larger sized, different uh, plain white mosaic cubes, and so you can't tell what was originally there, but you know there had to have been an image there, because it's, it's not just accidental damage, it's very deliberately focused where an image of an animal would uh, once uh, have been. And so then other examples where the damage is not done as carefully or as artistically as in some of the uh, earlier examples uh, that we uh, saw. This is one of the more elaborate uh, cases of the deliberate damage. There was a hope to have this included in the exhibition at the Met, but unfortunately at the end it didn't work out. Uh, but this is the, the most humorous example of the deliberate elimination of an image that's being done very carefully in an artistically appealing way to have the mosaic look attractive when the operation is uh, finished. And I hope you can see that originally there was a bowl here. You can see the hind legs, the tail, the front legs, and a little bit of the hump of the back of the bowl that originally would have been depicted here. And this inscription is a quote from the Bible, and the lion and the bull will lie down and eat fodder together. It's an image of peaceful paradise when lions and bulls will you know, be peaceably living uh, together. So there's a, a bull here, a lion would have been over here, and someone has very artistically removed the bulk of the body of the bull and you know, put in a tree and a funny looking tree there and then this vase and vine scrolls, very artistically done uh, to uh, replace the image of the bull that's no longer acceptable, but then leaving a little trace of what the image originally had once uh, been. And uh, just another example of one of the, the dozens and dozens of cases of this, where what you realize what's going on isn't so totally clear. Well, originally, if you look at just at these two images, you might say, well, that's rather careless. It's not carefully following the outlines of the animals the way the earlier examples were. Uh, so you might say, well, that's just for accidental. But then you look here and here and here, you again realize you have the animals with the cubes removed so carefully that you can still see the outlines of the original animals. But then when you look further, you see that you know, this image was destroyed, but this one is left completely intact. And you have a bird here, a bird here, a bird here that were completely destroyed, but then the birds here are left undamaged. 